They're grim, nihilistic, and dreadfully ominous. Even when they fight on the side of good, they'll never crack a smile or share in the reward. Oh, great. We're talking about edgelords, aren't we? Sasuke, rival to Naruto Uzumaki and the solitary survivor of the Uchiha clan. And he a rival to Yusuke Urameshi and lonely orphan to demons. Neat. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. The Uchiha clan was renowned for their incredible ability in battle. Despite being one of the founding families of the Hidden Leaf Village, Konoha, the Uchiha were outcast and cut off. For good reason! Their people had gotten pretty famous for attacking the village with the big nine-tailed fox, so not a good look. But everything changed with the head of the clan's firstborn son, Itachi. He was a brilliant boy and a promising future for the family. Even becoming the youngest kid to ever graduate ninja school. I went there for a bit, but then I learned they didn't use guns, so, you know. But Itachi opposed the clan's latest plot for a coup. His response was, well, pretty clear cut. I'll say, he went and murdered all of them. Every last one, except for his kid brother, Sasuke. Naturally, Sasuke was pretty pissed off that his big bro killed his whole family, so he swore to become the bestest shinobi ever and hunt Itachi down. Probably should've let him in on the plan there, Itchy. Just like his brother, Sasuke soared through his schooling with flying colors, quickly learning the three primary kinds of jutsu, or ninja techniques. Ninjutsu, which is basically magic spells, Genjutsu, which messes with the mind, and Taijutsu, the one where you just punch people. While Sasuke impressed with inhuman speed, swordsmanship, and physical ferocity, he's mastered several powerful ninjutsu techniques. Like belching his classic fire breath, making up to eight shadow clones of himself, and the Chidori, a ball of freaking lightning that has some shocking effects. Plus many more. And along the path to revenge, he spent much of his time perfecting and improving these techniques, even mastering lightning release to the point of casting Kirin, an electric strike in the shape of a dragon. Divine Intervention 2.0, smiting your foes is the way to go. He can infuse his abilities with any of the five elements, fire, wind, earth, water, heart, go play. No, no, lightning, obviously. No. As well as yin release, an element of creation itself. So basically, don't make fun of Sasuke to his face, cause he'll kill the shit out of you before you even know what's happening. And we haven't even covered his best weapon yet. Right, it turns out Itachi didn't only spare his brother because he loved him. He planned for Sasuke to witness this horror. He planned for Sasuke to swear revenge on him. Because this was the sort of trauma and hatred necessary to unlock in Uchiha's greatest weapon, the Sharingan. The Sharingan eyes aren't some cool looking lenses. They give Sasuke a bunch of new abilities. He can see chakra, the energy within people that powers jutsu. He can copy an opponent's techniques, memorizing them after one look. It is almost like a mirror image of my own taijutsu. He can even trap you in a bonkers genjutsu hallucination that makes you go crazy or just pass out. Like me on Saturday. And that's just the standard version. By adding the trauma of loss to the mix, the Sharingan can evolve like a Pokemon into the Mangekyo Sharingan. With the Mangekyo, Sasuke can call upon far greater powers. He can cast Amaterasu, an irrepressible black fire hot enough to burn the sun. Even better, Sasuke can summon the Susano, an enormous avatar of chakra that fights for and protects him. Which is strong enough to slice through meteors. Badass. Too bad Sharingan Part 2 has one big downside. Yes, it eventually causes the user to go blind. Unless you find someone else with the same manky eyes, lock those out of his head, then rip out your own eyes and replace them with the other guys. Gross. And so Sasuke found and killed his older brother, avenging his family and swapping Mangekyo eyes. Which was, again, Itachi's plan all along. So, good job? Who came up with this shit? Ahem. <clears throat> We're not done with eyeball shenanigans, though. He also got some Renegon circles, which gives him all sorts of weird context-sensitive powers, like the I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna say that word. He teleports by bending space and time. Most notably, the Renegon grants Sasuke the powers of the six paths, like the Diva Path for manipulating gravity, the Human Path for ripping out souls, and the Preta Path for draining energy. Like a ninja vampire. 
Sasuke has used the Diva Path in particular to extreme effect, once creating multiple planetoids which crashed in an explosion visible from outer space. By checking out the Earth's curve here, it's pretty obvious the blast is worth more than 35 teratons of TNT. That's 7 billion times more powerful than the Tsar Bomb, the biggest nuke ever detonated. And as mentioned before, Sasuke is known for his incredible speed, able to keep pace with the likes of fellow legends Naruto and Madara. In fact, Naruto once dodged an attack from Madara which, according to the fourth data book, moves at the speed of light. And Sasuke can fight Naruto to a draw. You know, the guy who's an alien descendant with a demon fox in his belly and also took a beam to the face that sliced the moon in half? That's a 27 exaton blast right there! With his quest complete, Sasuke finally discovered Itachi's true goals. But even after making peace and having a child of his own, he never could return to the happy life of society. You just can't shake off all that edginess. Instead, Sasuke chose to defend the hidden leaf from a distance, just like his brother before him. Don't mess with Sasuke of the Sharingan! If anyone who criticizes my way of life were to come forward, I'd turn around and kill every single one of their loved ones, so that they too could grasp what it's like to experience this hatred of mine. Standing less than five feet tall, this black-clad goth child may not seem so intimidating at first glance. Yeah, I mean, paint a red stripe on him and he's just a human shadow the hedgehog. But in reality, Hiei is a menacing warrior of demonic heritage, born to a forbidden love between an ice woman and a fire monster. Ah, reminds me of me and my ex. Well, too bad the rest of the ice ladies got pissed that she had banged a literally hot dude, so when her son was born, they chucked the little bastard right off their floating island. Damn, ladies, I know you're jealous, but you don't gotta take it out on the kid. That's my stepfather's job. And yet, the child survived. Raised by thieves and remembering every last moment of the catastrophe of his birth, Hiei swore revenge. And having bandits for foster parents means he got into stealing and murder at a wonderfully young age. With his otherworldly physique, Hiei quickly became an expert in athletic ability and swordsmanship. These skills would grow even further after he joined forces with his rival, the spirit detective Yusuke. But he needed more than blades and brawn to get back at the ice bitches. So he went to Shigure, the doctor of darkness, who would implant a magical third eye into his forehead. Cause we still ain't done with these eyeball shenanigans, I guess. This was the Jagan, literally translating to evil eye. With the Jagan, Hiei wields numerous mystical powers. He can spy on people and objects from 10 kilometers away. He can read minds and protect his own from powerful mental attacks. He can move objects and energy with telekinesis. And that's just the start of his powers. But with the Jagan stuck in his face, Hiei finally made the trip to Ice Town. But uh... Wasn't, wasn't quite what he expected. Right, instead of slaughtering the demon women as he planned, he spared them because he realized that they lived meaningless, cold lives. You get it, because they're ice people. Is this pity from a demon? I mean, you might not want to invite this guy to your next backyard party, but he's not that bad of a guy. Case in point, he found out he's got a twin sister and set it on a new mission to find and protect her. And with the Jagan eye and his further abilities, he'd make one powerful bodyguard. Yeah, by incinerating all your enemies! He can light his punches ablaze with his fist of the mortal flame, giving his foes a sick burn. But what's better than normal fire? Um, <clears throat> demon fire, of course! Dragon shaped demon fire! Dragon! Ah! The, the darkness! This is the Dragon of the Darkness Flame an overwhelming entity of fire and pain that can obliterate foes in an instant. It just killed all those people! I feel a little bad, but they're demons, so yeah. The dragon burns hotter than fire and is difficult to control. It can even turn on its wielder. Yet Hiei has recklessly forced himself to master the technique. With some, uh, trial and error. Don't worry, he got better. His demon elemental resistance has certainly helped. He can power through most elemental attacks no problem, and is basically immune to fire and ice. And when he wants to get up close and personal, he can mold the darkness flame into a kick-ass sword. He can even summon multiple dragons after assuming his ultimate form, the Jaganshi. Oh yeah, you thought one extra eye was creepy? How about a bunch of eyes all over? 
Which, to me, just seems like a lot of weak points. Well, well, it's not. The Giganchi form greatly increases all of Hiei's abilities, not just the Darkness Flame. And to add even more layers to this, Hiei can also absorb the Dragon of the Darkness Flame himself, further increasing his strength and speed. All of which lets him keep kicking ass and taking names around the demon world. His buddy Yusuke was quick enough to dodge lightning, but was not fast enough to see all of Hiei's sword swings when he slashed up this ice guy, Siryu. How many times did you cut him? Only 16. And here I could only keep track of seven or eight. Therefore, Hiei was clearly attacking at speeds far faster than lightning, around 300 times the speed of sound. And that was still very early in his journey when he was considered a C-class demon. As he ranked up, Hiei gained even more incredible speed. His darkness sword could even cut and burn through Kuro Momotaro, who evolved to be totally immune to, uh, cutting and burning. So figure that one out. By the end of his adventures, Hiei was ranked S-Class level, making him many times faster than before and equal in power to his rival, Yusuke. And that means he's super powerful. Right, Sensui, an S-Class human, claimed he had to limit his power, as a mere 50% of it could create a worldwide earthquake. Yusuke's mentor, Genkai, even believed Yusuke could obliterate the entire planet. But conveniently, the demon world is a lot bigger and tougher than Earth, so this crazy power level is tricky to prove. Either way, he is basically on a league of his own. As shown by Sensui, a typical S-Class demon can defeat three A-Class ones with minimal effort. But he took on 500 all by himself! I unleashed 500 A-Class demons. Then you should know by now that when I say 500 A-Class demons, I mean a thousand. Damn, dude! Shouldn't they call you, like, Ultimate S Plus Class or something by now? Well, he's certainly comparable to Yusuke. When Yusuke fought the Demon King Yomi in the Demon World Tournament, the two of them hit each other so hard that this happened. Holy shit, that's insane! While this technically occurred on a tree in the hardier demon world, yes, that's a tree, we can calculate the curvature of the planet as seen here. The treetop appears to be well above cloud level, and we can use the circumference and the distance to this girl to determine the explosion's overall size. With all this in mind, we concluded the blast must have been at least 4.5 million meters high, nearly 15 million feet. From just a punch! Well, I guess two punches technically, but Yusuke wasn't even in top form at the time, and he survived being in the middle of all that. Since Hiei can fight evenly with Yusuke and even move faster than him, I'd say they're definitely in the same ballpark of power level. And just for kicks, Hiei can separate his spirit from his mortal body while still maintaining all of his abilities. So, is he a demon? Or a ghost? Uh, both, I guess. He can do this anytime he wants, unlike normal people who need to be killed or sometimes just knocked out. You mean like this? Ah, ghost! Anyway, Hiei kept his word and soon found his sister in need of aid. Despite his terrible upbringing, he's actually found a supportive family among friends. Except he never did tell her he was her brother, because he's just too emo for that. Still, few can match the dangerous power Hiei commands. Once your own doom has been unraveled, I assure you there's no turning back. All right, the combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. But first, let me tell you how to protect yourself from the ghost in the machine with ExpressVPN. These days, having a VPN is essential, and trust me, ExpressVPN is the best you can find. What's a VPN? It's like having a virtual bodyguard for your internet. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network and protects your privacy and data while you're browsing. It blocks outside snooping, interference, and censorship. And unlike most other VPNs, ExpressVPN is perfect for gaming. With shorter connection routes between you and gaming servers, ExpressVPN reduces ping and overall lag. And by masking my location, I've downloaded games from other countries with earlier launch dates, so I get to play all those sweet JRPGs early and make all my friends jealous. You like JRPGs? Who doesn't? ExpressVPN gives you faster speeds than other VPN providers, server options across 94 countries, apps for every device you can imagine, and it's easy to use. Connect with just one click. Take back your internet privacy today and find out how you can get three months free by clicking the link in the description box or by going to expressvpn.com slash battle. That's expressvpn.com slash battle. But right now, it's time for a death battle!
You! Where are you going? That's not your business. Turn back! Fist of the mortal flame! I'll end this quickly. Put you to rest. Like it, a fight fit for a demon. KO! Wait, 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 really? I thought this was an easy win for Sasuke. What happened? Well, hold on, I promise there's a good explanation. This was an extremely close match. Sasuke was certainly faster than Hiei given his light speed reactions through scaling to Naruto. And technically he went through superior training, so there's certainly a few versions of this fight where he could use those advantages to take the win. But we're always looking for who has the best chances to win most often, not just in very specific situations. Exactly. At first glance, it's easy to assume Sasuke's enormous and varied arsenal could have simply overwhelmed Hiei. But to our surprise, Hiei had perfect counters for almost everything Sasuke could throw at him. Being a fire and ice demon hybrid with elemental resistances, he's powered through electrical attacks like the Chidori before, and his fire immunity and oneness with the darkness flame turned the devastating Amaterasu into a mere annoyance. Sasuke's Rinnegan gave him gravity control, and that Sharingan Genjutsu was pretty brutal, but Hiei's Dagon gave him telekinesis and mental protections, putting the brakes on Sasuke's eye shenanigans. Even if Sasuke tried using human path on him to rip out his soul, it wouldn't have mattered, because Hiei could keep fighting as a ghost! And frankly, it's unlikely Sasuke was that much faster. While Hiei could outpace lightning at C-Class, the difference between spirit classes is far greater than a simple 100 or 200% increase. After all, a lower S-Class could beat three A-Class fighters without much effort, and Hiei is an upper S-Class. 
But most surprisingly, Hiei's level of power surpassed Sasuke's. No friggin' way! Let's look at the Susanoo's meteor feet. By measuring the meteor's size compared to the Susano and applying sheer force, we determined this feat equaled about 364 teratons of TNT at most. In scientific terms, that's a hell of a lot. And obviously, scaling to Naruto means he could take a hit worth 27 exatons. How could he top that? Well, recall how there were multiple claims that S-Class demons could obliterate the Earth. Since most fights took place in the demon world, which is much hardier than the human one, these claims were difficult to prove and seemed a little dubious. Until Yusuke fought Yomi and they made that gigantic explosion. As we determined earlier, that blast was at least 4.5 million meters tall. At minimum, the kinetic energy of an explosion like this would equal about 285 zeta tons of TNT. That's 21 zeros! Way more than Sasuke's meteor feet! Even if we half it because there's two people doing the punching, that's still over 5,000 times greater than the Naruto moon slice. It's probably even more impressive than that. If the tree is actually closer to the clouds and therefore closer to the planet, that technically changes the shot's perspective, which would mean the tree is actually even wider, the explosion even larger, and thus the kinetic energy even greater. So when Genkai said an S-Class demon like Yusuke or Hiei could wipe out a planet, she wasn't kidding around. Correct. While Sasuke is equal to beings powerful enough to slice and shift moons, he still could not match Hiei's strength. Even if Hiei was only half as strong as Yusuke, this would still put him well above Sasuke in terms of sheer power output and durability. So while Sasuke was still faster, he had a real tough time trying to land a fatal blow. There were a lot of factors in this fight, and Sasuke certainly clinched several advantages of his own. But in the end, Hiei's impeccable abilities, perfect counters, and clearly superior power took the victory. Sasuke lost the edge and was a sure and gunner. The winner is Hiei. Hey, thanks for watching this episode. If you want the battle music for yourself, you can get it by clicking the link down below. And if you just can't get enough death battle, make sure to click the link over there to keep watching. No man can challenge my power. But what is a man?